Apologies for the lateness. I had a lot of stuff happen since the last episode. So, after 15 episodes, we are finally seeing the Ronin Warriors fight Talpa on his home turf. What is interesting is that the other loyal warlords go through a similar ritual that brainwashed Anubis, but are doing so willingly, but are still experiencing pain. Talpa reveals his reasoning for not just showing up himself and defeating the warriors and why he never killed or got rid of any of his warlords for failing. The armors grow stronger through conflict, and he wants to possess these enhanced armors. You also learn that Toppa's past invasion, where the armor started out as his one armor and was defeated by the Ancient One using his own armor and one strike. The Nine Armors creation is shown with the Ancient One taking Toppa's armor and through chanting and a magic furnace puts the armor into Nine, also imbuing their symbols. I did not realize that the Ancient One was this powerful in his prime, and I do not blame Toppa for wanting to make his armor stronger so that he doesn't get one shot at again. Also, Toppa had a horse. Also, White Blaze the Tiger is over 1,000 years old. So, after the Warlords minus Anubis who has turned against Toppa are in a stalemate with the Warriors despite their enhancement, Toppa absorbs the three Warlords and begins to recreate their original armor. Just to show how he has been holding back with the power of the three armor, he makes short work of the Ronin warriors, including Anubis, and absorbs their armors, making him empowered by eight armors. With each armor, he becomes more solid looking. He can also change his size. And the flashback, he is more of a very tall human, while in his modern form, he is a giant, almost like a giant Gundam or Megazord. We get an entire episode of Toppa toying with Ryo, and I admit I was face palming the entire way because he needs to seal the deal and finish it. Glow and play around when you have absorbed all of your targets. Be like Cell from Dragon Ball Z. Run to the end goal. This playing around gives the four Ronin warriors within him the ability to fight for control of his body, but Ryo can't bring it to himself to deal the finishing blow. Toppa wises up and absorbs Ryo. So now we learn that Toppa's absorbing process has two stages, physical and mental. Physical is simple. He devours their physical form through his mouth wholesale. At this stage, he gains the armor's power. Next stage is mental, where the victim needs to consent to being assimilated. Though there seems to be some form of mental integration, as Toppa can use the attacks of those he absorbed, and is shown by superimposing their image or stance on Toppa. Tapa does let slip that the other warriors are fighting Tampa mentally. Ryo seems to give up through this process, but a combination of the Ancient One apologizing for bringing them into this conflict and the power of friendship and whatnot, Ryo escapes and unlocks a new armor by merging with the armors of the Ronin Warriors. This armor is able to defeat Tapa and free the other warriors. This armor is colored white and has sort of a sun motif. I guess it's sort of be like a a foil to Toppa's armor, which is sort of grayish black and whatnot. And it seems like the swords that we see on the back of Toppa's armor is reflected on a real's white armor and in the form of the horns or the sort of sun rays we see around his helmet. Um, Rio still has the two swords, so he doesn't gain any new weaponry. It's just like an enhanced form of his, um, his 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 red armor it makes me think that if the other warriors were to achieve this form it would be sort of enhanced versions of their own armor rather than there being one set of fusion or whatnot i guess it just the, the the fusion is more of an upgrade than an actual incorporation of their abilities like we see what happens when um Tapa absorbs the armors when he gains access to their attacks so you can say that Rio goes from being a flame to the sun, which would be very interesting. We were to try to look at the, what the other warriors might be. Maybe I may explore that in another episode, just sort of speculate what I think the other war, Ronin warriors with their upgraded um, armors would look like if they were to, to upgrade with the method that we saw in this um arc so it ends the first act of the show an interesting note is that we also learn why Toppa went after earth his power is based in negative emotions and humans can provide him with just enough to fulfill some greater goal 
I feel like Tapa lost the moment he decided to toy with Rio. I would have absorbed all the warriors as fast as possible, gone to mental dominance, and then play around with my newfound power, personally. I wonder if the plan was to host the dominated warriors and warlords into new bodies and make the warlords nine instead of the four. It's an interesting foil to see the Ronin warriors sim see the Ronin warriors symbols, what they would transform into. Like I would have Rio as wickedness, Sage as ignorance, Sai as betrayal, Kento as rot, and Sage as death. I also want to give credit to Yuli and Mia for not throwing themselves into the fight initially. Um, they finally understand that they are more of a hindrance than a help. And I do know they eventually jump in and it is, does actually help with the battle. Um, in this case, White Blaze comes in and he saves Rio. Rio. I think Rio was falling or something like that. I have to go back and check. But I'm, I'm glad that they're being more realistic about you know their participation in this conflict in this particular arc so no damsel in distress which i can say is the case for most of this series so far for the first half aside from a couple of story you know a couple of episodes they sort of learn to how to keep themselves from being a i don't know hindrance to the ronin warriors which is very, which is great in my opinion, you know, being able to know your limits and whatnot. And obviously with Mia, her whole thing is she's like the encyclopedia. She has the, the knowledge and all the other stuff. But, you know, as we get closer to the, the battle with Tafa, obviously the information we need to know is covered by a combination between Tafa himself and the ancient one. Um... So, of course, her role, and, and Yuli is more of, I don't know, the moral center. I guess it's supposed to represent us, the viewer, you know, us, you know, because we don't have superpowers. We don't have superpower armor, and 99% of us don't have degrees, college or university degrees specializing in, in this type of stuff. Yeah, so... So that concludes talking about today's um, story arc. I may go back and make another video, just my general thoughts on the overall arc in general. I feel like, you know, this is like my first time trying to do a, you know, video. I want to call it a video essay, but just trying to go back and review the show. Um, I feel like this is like more summary than trying to delve deep. It's just, you know, I'm just, you know, practice makes perfect. So, um, let me know in the comment section, like, and subscribe. Um, if you want to send me a message for anything that I will actually see, um, shoot me up a message um, through DeviantArt, through my DeviantArt, which is in the video description. So uh, this is Umitencho. Have a wonderful day.